This is my audience. I'm Rand Williams. This is for introduction to speech. This is my verbal citation. And these are my outline papers. Have you ever wondered who was behind the iconic paintings of those dancing figures? Today I'll be giving you background on the man behind it all, Keith Haring. There are three main points I'd like to discuss today about Keith Haring. I will start with his background, then I will inform you about his Grace House mural that once stood in Manhattan, New York, and finally I will discuss his activism with AIDS in the final years of his life. Let me begin with the background of Keith Haring's life. Haring was born May 4th in 1958 in Reading, Pennsylvania, but was raised in a nearby town. Haring graduated from his alma mater and soon enrolled in the Ivy School of Professional Arts in Pittsburgh, then later dropped out, moved to New York City, and enrolled in the School of Visual Arts. He was often inspired by hip hop and break dancing, and it caused him to take to the subway stations to create his art. As stated by Martina Vassil in the Hip Hop and Herring Pop Culture and Interdisciplinary Learning for the General Music Classroom, many of his art pieces were influenced by hip hop culture. Graffiti art in the subway stations inspired Herring more than art galleries. Many of his drawings were inspired by the movements of break dancers. Aaron created thousands of drawings on the walls of subway stations. He had done this by sketching with chalk on the black matte surfaces used to cover old advertisements. Such as in this picture where he drew artist transit and some of his iconic figures. Now let's continue to Herring's Grace House mural. The Grace House mural was painted in the 1980s and was approved by Gary Mallon. He was the director of the youth center there and an old convent building. The mural spirals up three floors with figures ending with a half figure diving into a doorway. Teenagers that were there that day were able to witness this mural piece together as Heron worked up three out of the five floors in the building. According to Gary Mallon, interviewed for Herring Impaired, authored by Stav Ziv, I think it took about 40 minutes. It was so fast and there was no sketch. It just flowed out of him. Mallon then went on to say he would paint the figures as he was moving. It was coming out of his head through the brush and onto the wall. This is a picture of a few of the floors inside the building. The building was unfortunately shut down in 2016 with the mural becoming endangered. Luckily, they were able to extract it as well as an anonymous buyer was allowed to purchase it later on in 2019. And finally, I will finish by informing you about Keith Haring's AIDS activism. Herring was diagnosed with AIDS in 1988. Herring later set up the Keith Herring Foundation in 1989 to support those battling AIDS and to educate the people. Herring used his last years of life to speak out about his battle with AIDS himself and to raise activism and awareness According to the Keith Haring Foundation, in 1989, he established the Keith Haring Foundation, its mandate to provide funding and imagery to AIDS organizations and children's programs, and to expand the audience of Haring's work through expositions, publications, and licensing of his artwork. This is one of his iconic artworks, Ignorance Equals Fear, Silence Equals Death, by AIDS Act Up. And I would like to conclude with recapping that I first discussed his background, then talked about his 85 foot long Grace House mural, and informed you lastly about his AIDS activism.
Keith Haring's impact on the world was to encourage liberation and education through his visual language, the art he made for the people. Haring also set up the Keith Haring Foundation in his last years of life to reach out to as many people as possible and to raise awareness and activism. The foundation is to provide finances, support to people, charities, education, and to research to battle AIDS. Thank you.